And this video clip is about the part two section of the 130 links. This is exciting stuff because for beginners, we're still kind of going through the history of where we came from and the people that are experts and should be referenced when we get into content, we get into how to design a project, and then how to finish a project, how to get it done off our desk and out into the hands of the users and move on to the next project. One of the cycles you can get into constantly is tweaking and tweaking and tweaking because, well, it could be a little bit better, you could solve every single problem, but then you don't get the project out the door quickly enough. And we all get into that scenario. We get most everything done, but we can't quite figure out everything. So what we're trying to do is get into this mode of saying, we are going to get completed, let's look at what other people have done, the purpose of the links. Now, some people, of course, put many hours into this, and we don't see anything other than the results. We say, oh, that's cool, and we get to move on, but we get to learn from that. So here we go with the next, next set of links. Hope you enjoy. Um, now we're moving to another bit of history that's important for us because Revolution Studio is something a lot of schools used. A lot of the um, classrooms today still use Revolution Studio. This was posted in 2008, of June 2008. So it's four years old, but people are still using this software and still need to know the kind of things our community can give them to bring them forward. Here's another older one. Um, the new hypercard is Revolution, introducing Revolution. So sometimes the history really helps you understand what to learn and who to pay attention to. What I'd like to do is keep building this link farm so that we have these categorized for people that need to come and do more work and be inspired by what's going on. And of course, pick out the winning sites and who to believe. Now, here's an interesting one because I think the LB card is a competitor or a, you know a co-conspirator tried to do the same thing and moved along. I don't know if they're still active or not. But uh, this is interesting that they try to do the same thing as HyperCard. Now, here's one that is on Inspired Logic, and they're talking about some of the ways of comparing this to Real Basic because some people can't decide which one to use. And we're almost done with the history part here. Um, we're looking now at the, the using a HyperCard file on a Windows machine. And this is obviously a, a, an emulation issue, which is what this is about, emulation. And so that's something people have to do in some environments is emulate. So there you find people that are really trying to tackle that issue. Here's the introduction of Runtime Revolution 2.1, uh, more than a year ago, obviously. Um, the last two here I'm going to get into with the history part is Revolution Media, which for those who don't know, Revolution Media was kind of like the free version where you could do things very limited, but now everybody could be using it. We don't have that anymore. And so our community might want to make a push to see if that can't be something that we bring back so that people can really try it out, play with it, um, and really learn so we can increase our community. I think that's an important part of what we could do with our Saturday group and, of course, the larger community. And I'm going to go to the last little bit of history here. And Revolution Dream Card Review. Dream Card is another one of those that we don't have these days, but the people in education um, really do focus on these because this is what they're using today in the elementary schools and their computer labs. This is what they have to deal with because they've gotten the software. They don't have the money to keep upgrading into live code and iOS. They're teaching so what I'd like to do is see if there aren't ways we could sort of revive or bring some of this together so that there's a better body of knowledge for those users, and there are going to be thousands of them. There aren't going to be thousands of us sitting here on Saturday watching these kind of uh, video presentations. But that concludes the history, what I'm trying to do, just to give people some perspective of why do we bring more inclusion into our community. And uh, that's something I hope we can do because that, of course, makes our audience into the hundreds and we can charge admission after a little while. Um, 
I'm going to now go to the idea of who to follow, who to pay attention to. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly because you recognize most of these people, but they're fairly current, or we should find out if they're still current. I think I'm back. I think my internet got a little funky there. Okay, Sons of Thunder. This is Ken Ray, a great resource. He's got really good stuff for people that are trying to solve cross-platform coding and XML and other topics. Um, here's a group that is on Facebook, Live Code Users Group. I think it only has four members. So that might be something that we start using um, since it's already there. I think it was started by Lynn Fredericks, but there's a group that hardly anybody knows about. This is Fourth World, Richard Gaskin. Good resource. He profiles some people, and hopefully he'll spend some more time updating his work. This is the LACS Center Software Development Consulting. They're out there, and it, I don't know if they're exactly current or not, but these are people that look like they have valuable contributions, and I bookmarked them. Now, here's one we should pay definite attention to, because this is probably the most valuable website you're going to find out there. This page opens up a whole world of... Oh, wait, that's Mark's. Okay, wrong one. Sorry, I'm going to move on. Yes, Economy X Talk is something you should pay attention to. A lot of good stuff there. Um, here's one that says, it's a wiki getting started with revolution. And there may be some good guides here, some good things that help uh, for a quick start, uh, you know, pieces. Um, the, the basic idea is these resources, if we collect them and bring them up to date, could be quite valuable. And uh, this maybe live code TV might be the good site. Now, here's something that um, you may remember from a few weeks ago. This is uh, Wilhelm Sanke's site. And be, he'll be here just a little bit here later. Here we go. This is a better view of it. Metamedia, Meta Media, University of Kassel. And he's their education and educational technology. He's done a lot of work on image data. Now, Another part of Ken Ray's site, because we're bouncing around here a little bit, he actually gets into what's called RevZilla, and this has to do with keeping up with what are the changes, the bugs, and so on. And this may be something that um, people need to pay attention to as a developer. Are the bugs getting fixed and which ones? And he's written some programming that helps you keep track of the bugs that mean most to you. Uh, this is one by Chip Walters, and he's a very, very... Um, He's a very active thinker on more than one level. He doesn't do, just do runtime revolution or live code. And here's something he put together that can diagram your websites if you're trying to put them together. So this is an interesting URL that will be on the page. This is one by a, a Jim Hurley. And he knows a lot about math. And he has something here called Turtle Graphics. And if you go down through, um, he has utilities. He's always coming in with something that has um, value when you say, how do we calculate the, 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 the way a circle and this moves, the perimeter? He seems to have that way of putting into um, our, our language the way to calculate something that we probably studied way back, but we can't remember, trigonometry and so on. Here's a very valuable website, and uh, if you don't, if you've never been here, you need to cruise through this one. Lots of content that's quite valuable. This is Sarah Reichelt, Trosware, and this is certainly worth anybody's time to go because she not only does Revolution, she also does OnRev, and quite good quality. She does the, um, the, the the tools as well as the explanation of why the tools work, and uh, now we go to a, a Retired gentleman, Alex Tweedley, he's very good with networking and coding and pays a lot of attention to quality as well. 
examples. Very helpful. He participates on the list. Um, here's one that uh, is hyperactive. This is Jackie, and everybody knows Jackie, and this is one. You should go take some time to look through her site. She has quite a few things on there that are valuable. And here's a new 